Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday afternoon on Hurricane Hillary. Again, we'll spend the first part of this video talking about Hillary, and the second half of the video we'll talk about the tropical systems in the Atlantic. So skip to that part if you're more interested in the Atlantic side of things. This is Hillary now starting to accelerate toward the north-northwest, going to parallel the coast of the Baja Peninsula of Mexico, which you can see here. This storm is on track so far, and California is up here where direct impacts will occur, not just in Southern California, but over a wide swath of the southwestern U.S. in this rather rare event. We don't see hurricanes in this part of the country very often. Hillary will weaken to a tropical storm before moving into the southwestern U.S., but the associated impacts from high surf, rainfall, flash flooding could be severe in many areas, and this will be a top-end event for this part of the country. This is the reconnaissance aircraft data coming out of Hillary today. Just to illustrate that weakening is occurring over cooling water beneath it, as expected. Central pressure has risen since yesterday, and the maximum winds in the northeastern quadrant, which is the strong quadrant of the storm, have only been showing at about 85 miles per hour from the aircraft estimates, at least on this flight. So we are seeing steady weakening of the top winds in Hillary, uh, but winds are far from the only hazard here. This is the large view showing the country and Hillary down here in the bottom left of your screen. This is going to scoot up the coast. Important to note, there is already rainfall out ahead of the system. You'll see this band of clouds. There is rain under here showing up on radar over parts of southeastern California and southwestern Arizona. So the rain has already begun. If you're preparing for potential flooding, that those preparations need to be rushed to completion as the rain does extend well ahead of the hurricane and is already beginning. Now, Hillary will move up very quickly, accelerating toward the northern Baja Peninsula, may go inland just over the Baja Peninsula first, or it could sneak along the coastline toward the California-Mexico border before officially moving ashore. In terms of wind impacts, this will matter a little bit for the coastal metro areas of San Diego, Tijuana, and Los Angeles, because if the center can scoot just off the coastline, it could bring a brief area of stronger winds in excess of 60 miles per hour to those coastal regions. But if it does sneak inland first, then some of those strongest winds will spare the coastline. However, strong winds will be felt over the higher terrain areas of southeastern California, and some local topographic effects could bring those strong winds down slope toward lower elevation. So there will remain wind impacts just likely below hurricane force. That would be winds of 40 to 75 miles per hour, denoting the tropical storm range. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast track as of this recording. Showing the track, as we described, this has shifted a hair to the east. So now, you know, somewhere along this part of the Baja Peninsula is where landfall at the exact center of Hillary is expected. Now again, the exact track of the center only really matters in terms of wind impacts to this section of the California coastline here. Hillary's a big storm spreading rain over a wide area well outside of this white cone that you see. For those who are unfamiliar, the cone only denotes the area where the center of the hurricane is likely to track. But in this case, it's much less about that uh, for most people. Uh, but we do want to watch carefully to see if the center does sneak offshore just long enough to bring some of the strongest winds into coastal areas of San Diego and LA and Tijuana. That will be something to watch for. But aside from that, this is mostly about water-related impacts. We have flash flooding risk at high in this pink area over a wide swath of southeastern San Diego, moderate in red, and then elevated over a large swath of the southwestern U.S. to include places in Arizona, Utah, Nevada, California, and even beyond farther north uh, as we go into uh, deeper into next week. One thing I want to share, the high risk issued by the Weather Prediction Center as part of NHC's uh, product suite, uh, that's a big deal. Having a high risk here is statistically associated with almost guaranteed severe flooding. This was a study done uh, by Patrick Burke with NOAA and others showing that in high-risk areas from WPC, the vast majority of flood damages occur on days where high risks are issued, 83%, and a majority of the fatalities also occur during high-risk days. So the, the water-related impacts here could be severe, and local topography will play a big role in which areas get landslides, and uh, you need to pay attention to what your local emergency management personnel are saying about your particular area and know your risk exactly where you are as wide swaths of these deserts and communities surrounding these areas 
we'll see a lot of water too much too quickly to handle, and this will be a high-end event. That's about it for the Hillary part of this video. Again, I'm not the guy that goes into enhanced local detail. You need to rely on your local officials, the National Weather Service forecast office in your area, and the National Hurricane Center to get a better read on exactly what your personal community will experience from Hurricane Hillary's impacts. Just be smart, be safe, and be prepared, especially if you haven't experienced a tropical system before. This is a rare part of the country to have one, and impacts will be widespread, so just play it smart. We're going to move on to the Atlantic now, and we're going to talk about a few systems. We have four or five areas that could develop within the next week, and we're getting busy now, peak weeks of the hurricane season. Like yesterday, we're going to start off talking about this tropical wave near the Florida Straits. Not quite there yet, but it's nearing the Florida Straits. We're seeing a little more convection today, but still scattered and disorganized. There's a little bit of a wave axis, southeasterly wind in the Bahamas, and some light northwesterly flow west of the Florida Straits. So there's a trough axis somewhere in here, uh, but nothing organized as of yet. The upper level low can be seen here. The upper level feathery cirrus is rotating over eastern Cuba. This is going to be backing away and getting out of the way of this wave, which will be under fairly favorable upper level flow conditions during its transit of the Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. It'll take two, two and a half days to cross the Gulf, and then we'll be talking about uh, moving into southern Texas or northern Mexico. So this is the European model, again, showing the wave axis here, crossing the Florida Straits sometime tonight, and then it will continue across the Gulf and gradually strengthen as it does so, reaching the coastline of the Rio Grande Valley area sometime on Tuesday morning or afternoon. This is a little bit of a weaker run of the European than we saw yesterday, but we still do see a nearly closed circulation here. So this could be a tropical depression or storm at the time of landfall. The big point about this system is it's moving rather fast for a Gulf of Mexico system. And one of the reasons for that is, well, the primary reason is this big ridge over the southern U.S. is very strong and lots of easterlies, very strong pressure gradient across the Gulf Coast. So that is ushering this system to the west at a rather quick pace, at least 15 knot forward speed across the Gulf. What that does is it makes it rather difficult to actually generate westerlies that oppose that background flow on the south side of the wave. So it actually takes a while for this to organize enough to actually close off a complete circulation. That's good news uh, to avoid significant impacts from this. Hopefully it will bring beneficial rain across its northern side into South Texas, an area that does need the rain. Uh, but this is unlikely to be able to develop to a significant degree. However, we could still see a last minute formation of a tropical depression or storm prior to landfall somewhere in this section of coastline on Tuesday. So we'll be watching out for that. NHC now has a medium chance of development for this one. Moving on now to the Central Atlantic, where we have a plethora of systems, some of them not even on your screen, but the three main ones here are three tropical waves slash areas of low pressure that have come out of the monsoon trough over the Atlantic. We have a few invests here. This is invest 90L over the Leeward Islands moving through today, uh, bringing some heavy showers to the region. We have invest 99L over the Central Atlantic, and we have invest 98L uh, further out over the eastern Atlantic, and there are more tropical waves behind this one, but they are still over or near Africa and will be coming out later. We're going to start off by talking about um, the two that aren't really going to matter. 98L is broad and sprawling. It is not being called a tropical depression yet because it is not compact and well-defined enough, according to National Hurricane Center standard. This is going to meander slowly toward the west-northwest or northwest. Over the coming days, we'll encounter strong wind shear, there is a lot of westerlies uh, over this part of the Atlantic. You'll see that some of the blue cirrus blowing off from all of these systems are kind of moving rapidly toward the right on your screen. There is a belt of westerly flow in general, and this wind shear is going to hamper not only 98L, but also 99L here in the center. And this one is embedded in a lot of dry air as well. You can see this background area of dark black on this water vapor loop. So 99 is in the middle of the dry air, and if we go back to the middle or to the visible loop, you'll see an exposed center showing up here in the middle of your screen. All of the convection is off toward the eastern side, being pushed that direction by the upper level westerlies that I just showed you. And this will likely be a short-lived system. It could be called a tropical depression already. National Hurricane Center has not yet made the call to do so, but it has been well organized since yesterday in terms of its low-level circulation, but it's in unfavorable conditions 
for further development. And this is likely to continue westward or west-northwestward, could get close to the Leeward Islands, but is unlikely to be a major factor. The player in the Caribbean is going to be 90L, this large lumbering wave now moving through the Windward Islands. And this one is probably the least organized of the three. However, it has the greatest potential for future development. This is the radar loop from uh, the barbadosweather.org website. And what you'll see here is, um, you know, here's Barbados. Here's the Lesser Antilles right here. And we'll see the wave axis moving through. So some of these radar echoes are moving out of the south toward Barbados. And you can see northeasterlies over St. Vincent and St. Lucia. There's probably right at the end of the loop here, uh, something that's trying to close off and do a circulation, but we don't quite have northwesterlies on the southern side of it yet. So this is almost a closed low, but still just a sharp wave axis moving quickly toward the west and now entering the eastern Caribbean. You can see the scattered showers moving across the islands today, so heavy rain amounts may occur in some localized areas as this moves through. Now as this enters the Caribbean, there is some wind shear but not enough to prevent further organization. This is the European model's 200 millibar wind forecast. You can see where the wave is here on Saturday night and early, early Sunday morning. You can see that there's the belt of westerlies to the north, which is inhibiting the other two waves to its east. But for the moment, uh, the uh, 90L will be underneath this upper level ridge, which is a pocket of lighter flow here in the white coloring, and that will allow some organization. As we go forward in time, the, the, the pace of the system's movement will slow down. We have this building trough. There's a couple of short waves here and another one here, which are digging down and we're eventually going to bring these westerlies closer to 90L and potentially drag the system toward the north. You'll see this trough really dig in here over the Bahamas and there's 90L. And at some point the steering flow is going to start tugging this toward Hispaniola. We look at the moisture plot here, we'll get a better depiction of what's going on. This is the European showing where the surface low is in about you know this evening or late tonight. The mid-level wave axis is actually offset a little bit to the east, so a little bit of tilting here because there is some shear, just not a prohibitive amount, out of the west. And as we continue on, you'll see that shear uh, persist with most of the moisture remaining on the eastern side, but as that trough digs into the north, we start to see a tugging of all of this moisture and 90L itself, that wave pocket toward Hispaniola as this upper load digs over the Florida Straits, Bahamas, and Cuba. And so eventually we get a sloppy system that ends up near or north of Hispaniola in four to five days. This is messy and prior runs have shown varying degrees of development. This particular run that I'm showing you, not very strong with this system, but if we look at the GFS, uh, we see a little bit more development. Here we are on Sunday night, early Monday morning, and you'll see that uh, a tight low does develop on the western side of this belt of moisture, and uh, this moves again into Hispaniola just a little bit farther east than on the European model. So we have this area of heavy rainfall that will be of potential concern for the mountainous terrain of the Dominican Republic, Haiti, potentially Puerto Rico, but we have seen a model trend a little farther west with successive runs in the last couple of days. So we'll see if Puerto Rico can avoid most of the heavy rain from this system, but something to watch for these mountainous Greater Antilles Islands going into the middle part of next week, as we will likely see moisture dragged north, regardless of how organized 90L becomes, it will be bringing significant impacts in terms of rain. Beyond this point, things get complicated. The GFS keeps a significant system around, but if we look at the upper level flow, we'll go forward here on the Euro, we'll see the system get dragged northward. Look at all the westerlies across this part of the Atlantic. These are generally unfavorable flow conditions for further development once it gets out of the Caribbean, and so things will get complex. Uh, it could survive to live another day, and then perhaps conditions will get more favorable, uh, but we don't know because things are very uncertain more than five days out, and all these little troughs driving by to the north are changing from run to run. And so it's unclear at this point what will become of 90L once it leaves the Caribbean. All we can really say with some certainty is that it will come out to the west and then get dragged northward, and we'll see this rain event over the Greater Antilles after that honestly question marks and we will have to wait and see gfs shows this surviving for longer the european kills it earlier uh, but we'll have more confidence in a couple days as we get a better handle on the upper level flow conditions predicted north of the caribbean 
but it's a messy situation and we're not expecting significant hurricanes coming out of this scenario right now on most of the modeling. That's about it for this video. Uh, lots of areas to watch, most of them pretty weak, most of them not expected to become significant hurricanes, but it is a reminder that it is the peak of the hurricane season, officially now entering the climatological maximum period of activity from now until late October. So we have many weeks to go. A good reminder to have your hurricane plan ready for the rest of the season, just in case a significant system forms and moves into your area. It could happen on short notice. It could happen anywhere anytime along the coastlines of the Caribbean countries, Central America, and North America. So be prepared. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.